Hey what's up guys and welcome back to a very special episode of Binging with Babish, where as you can see I've soundproofed my kitchen, because this week we're cooking under the terrifying conditions portrayed in A Quiet Place. Fittingly, this episode is sponsored by Dolby Dimension. These headphones are super cool not only because they have active noise cancelling, but because they have a really cool feature called Life Mix, which pumps in an adjustable amount of ambient noise, so you don't miss anything around you. Doorbell, baby crying, timer going off in the kitchen. So while I'm enjoying my strict regimen of Frasier three times daily, I won't miss a thing because because I've got my life mix turned up to 7. Sawyer, however, likes his turned up to 11, effectively giving him super hearing, and making him the bloodthirsty alien to my John Krasinski. So, can I make the meal from the movie while he's watching the movie without disturbing him and getting killed? Well, there's only one way to find out. Download a decibel meter on my iPad, throw blankets all over the kitchen, and get cooking. As a rule of thumb, I'm gonna try to stay below 80 decibels while I prepare what I think was the fish from the movie, Rainbow Trout. First up, we gotta clean and gut the fish, start by snipping off all the fins, Try not to make eye contact with the poor little guy. And then we gotta cut out the gills, which is where most of the blood is hanging out. Once you got those gnarly little things out of there, it's time to gut this guy. We're gonna place one single long cut down the length of the bottom of the fish, and yanking out everything that we find inside. You wanna remove as much as you can so all you see are the fillets and the spine. Then we gotta scale the fish using the sharp side of your knife. Scrape the scales against the grain, so to speak, until all that remains is some nice, soft, slippery fish skin. Then we wanna rinse this fish and dry it thoroughly and then set it aside so we can prepare what looked to me like a tomato salad. The family in the movie seemed to be very fond of garlic, so I'm gonna grab like three heads of this smoked garlic, peel off most of the papery exterior, slice off the top so all the cloves are exposed, and arrange in a metal bowl. Now I'm guessing that cooking fats would be pretty hard to come by a year and a half into the apocalypse, but olive oil has a theoretical 24 month shelf life if stored properly, so let's assume that they have a bottle kicking around for special occasions. Let's also assume that they have kosher salt and freshly ground pepper because his life really works living without it. Now in lieu of aluminum foil, we're going to top this metal bowl with a smaller metal bowl and roast at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes, removing once the cloves are soft and lightly browned. Now I could eat roast garlic with a spoon, but roast smoked garlic? This is some next level sh**. We're setting that aside to cool completely while we make the rest of our dressing. We're starting with what remains of the olive oil. Oh dear. Looks like that's our last salad forever, kids. And to that, we are going to add a food with an indefinite shelf life, vinegar. In this case, white wine vinegar, in about a one-to-one -one ratio with the oil. Now, like so many pimples ready to pop, we're gonna squeeze this garlic, sorry, gross, into our vinaigrette. I'm gonna go with like two heads of garlic because I love this stuff. And the third head, I'm gonna eat by myself off camera, probably in bed or something. Now I'm gonna use a potato masher to mash up those garlic cloves a little bit. And then I'm going to season liberally with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. Now you might notice that I'm doing this in a disposable tub Tupperware, not only to be quieter than a whisk and bowl, but because the easiest way to emulsify a dressing is to place in a lidded container and give it a good shake. In seconds, you will have an effortlessly creamy vinaigrette. This stuff is hurting for some lemon juice, but I can't imagine that they have that in upstate New York where the movie was filmed. But what they did have lots of was tomatoes. So I'm slicing up a variety of sizes and colors, scooping everybody into a nice quiet wooden bowl, and adding some chopped basil, which they interestingly had sitting in the middle of the table with some other fresh herbs in lieu of condiments. So we're going to add that to our tomatoes, and I'm going to add half a red onion thinly sliced. Because tomato salad is going to be difficult enough to eat without mozzarella, and there's no way in hell I'm eating it without onion. And look at that, it's a really pretty salad. I'd make that even if it weren't the apocalypse. Lastly, something the movie had no shortage of was corn, and it looks like Emily Blunt's character was cooking the fish on top of the corn as a sort of makeshift oven rack, so we're going to do the same in case it imparts any ancillary flavor. Plop our fish down on top, and then it's time to score and season. Scoring isn't totally necessary, it's just kind of a presentation thing, but we want to score it in a crosshatch pattern. Both sides, don't be lazy now. And then we want to season liberally all over, inside and out, with kosher salt, freshly ground pepper, and oil. Luckily, I found a secret stash of this stuff when I raided the nearby villages. Make sure it's well coated all over. Ideally, I'd like to stuff this guy with a bunch of herbs and lemons, but you can't always get what you want in the sound hunting alien future. 450 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 minutes later, yields a fully cooked fish registering 145 degrees at its thickest point that we can now carve table side, so to speak. We're going to start by making a shallow incision along the top of the fish to aid in peeling off the skin. You can see on the bar graph there that I coughed and very nearly doomed us all, but Sawyer got distracted by the raccoons distracting the aliens in the movie, so we got lucky. Anyway, once we've got all the skin off, we are placing a cut down the center of the fish's spine and beginning to pull the meat downward and upward from the center with forks. Then once you've got all the meat off the top, you get to do the most fun thing you'll ever do 
in your entire life, which is pull out the entire fish's spine in one fell swoop. Hang on to this if you want for making fish stock, otherwise pat yourself on the back for deboning your first ever fish. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's definitely worth trying at your next dinner party. But now it's time to plate up, and by plate up I mean kale leaf up, as the family in the movie very cleverly eats their meal on a giant kale leaf so as to avoid any clattering. So we're gonna load that up with our tomato salad, some fish, and top the whole thing with some of our smoked and roasted garlic vinaigrettes. And there you have it, a healthy, sustainable, simple meal, prepared and eaten in relative silence. As such, we're gonna use our five-fingered forks and knives, and I gotta say, this turned out pretty great. The trout, when cooked to 145 degrees Fahrenheit, was tender and juicy, the tomatoes were nice and fresh, and the dressing was to die for. It desperately needed lemon, but vinegar helped fill the gap, and it ended up becoming a member of the Clean Leaf Club. And then the leaf itself became a member of the Clean hands club. All in all, a pretty great meal if you're trying to sustain your family in the new American wasteland. Alright, now it's time to surprise Sawyer with the fact that I've been making him the meal from the very movie he's watched. Hey, sounds like dinner's ready. Wait, wait, you you could hear me this whole time? Yeah, I had life mix up to 11. I could uh, hear you breathing. Oh, come on, I spent like $5 on this decibel meter app. Oh, I thought I heard fish. Hey guys, so I just want to thank Dolby again for sponsoring this episode. It was kind of a match made in heaven because I love home theater stuff, and these have got to be the coolest home theater headphones I've ever tried. In addition to the adjustable life mix feature, they've also got touch controls on the side, that sweet magnetic charger, and a robust app to control almost every aspect of the headphones. They've even got a head tracking feature, so it sounds like the audio is coming from wherever the Bluetooth source is. Check out the link in this video's description to learn more about Dolby Dimension, the perfect gift for the audiophile, cinephile, or murderous future alien in your life.